It's so good to see you guys. So good to yeah. see you. Oh yeah. <laughs> How's uh? Her, did, have you been up too much today? Uh, I don't know. Um, done, have you done anything uh, exciting? Uh, you know that this this foundation where I uh, where we uh, go and watch movies every every Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we just hang out uh, awesome. for a while after that. Uh, yeah. Until like t- eight uh, p.m. and cool. it was good. What What did you see? Uh, nothing. Just uh, uh, walking. There's a there's a there's a street called the Via Sparana when we just hang out and uh, and uh, we didn't do much, but uh, it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, sorry. What what movie did you watch? Uh, the Sun, which is uh, part of the of a trilogy, I think, with uh, the father. The father uh, uh, was the movie with uh, Anthony Hopkins. Oh yeah, that, that movie. Good. I love that movie. That's so good. That movie is good. That movie is the pretty fa- good. The, the father is. Yeah, I saw that when it came out, um, in theaters that yeah yeah that was uh, i would i would say the line actually because the, yeah. uh, there was there was no box office in italy uh yeah. about the film but okay. uh, it was great and and i recommend the sounds the sounds too because is uh, it also directed by the same person uh yes i think so uh, uh, it's a little bit. How do I say it? <laughs> ah, let me check translate. <laughs> oh yes, uh, there's no internet here. <laughs> <laughs> Is the PC I... taking all of it? This is uh yeah nothing no connection <laughs> damn how are you on how are you on on Discord then <laughs> no it's uh I don't know I'm in, I'm in the kitchen and it just doesn't work maybe the yeah. the Wi-Fi doesn't work here yeah. Uh, uh, from a distance. Yeah. Weird. What's um what's your favorite movie? My favorite book my favorite movie uh I think is uh, uh it's a movie uh, I don't remember the name. I think it's uh it's a movie uh, well, the plot is very simple, and uh, there's this guy, uh, adult, who uh, finds about uh, having cancer and uh, trying to live his life at best, even though he uh, he has uh, like a, has like hard job and. Uh, yeah, okay. I don't remember the name, I'm so, and I can search it. Do you, do you know where the movie's from? The movie? Yeah. Like what country? Uh, okay. Uh, maybe. Uh, maybe Holland. Mm, that's Holland. an interesting place. I, I need to definitely get more into actually like movies outside of the US. Yeah, I've, I watched some good. I watched some good foreign movies recently. The Hunt with Mads Mikkelsen. 
is about a good place to start with foreign movies. It's about a, a school teacher um, who gets accused um, of uh, molestation by one of his students. Um, absolutely insane film. It's Danish. Uh, I'm assuming this isn't the same movie. Uh, what? No, 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 no. This is a different movie that I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I was, did, uh, yeah. I, 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 I don't know if you I, looked I was, it up. I, <laughs> I, I, no, I was just, I was just saying, if you're looking to get into foreign movies, that The Hunt is a no, good be, no, because uh, it says it's about a group of elites who kidnap working class people oh. and hunt them. No, 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 no. No, its Danish name is Jag Ten. How do you spell that? Um, J A G, T E N. Um, but in English, it's called The Hunt. Oh, yeah. I think I watched it. Yeah? Yeah, it's so good. It, like, it's one of the most infuriating movies I've ever seen in my life. Like, it made me yeah, so angry. Yeah, I watched it. It was so in- intense. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you, um, did you watch Oppenheimer when it came out in Italy, like, a few weeks ago? Yes. Yes, I did. What did you think? With my, with my pop. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, yeah. And uh, it, uh, I, I don't know. Um, I don't really know about uh, the Prometheus uh, part. Uh, yeah. What does it mean? Because you know the Prometheus and the the Saturn the Saturn uh, myth, myths are myths and they are considered archetypes yeah. so they're just yeah uh, both uh, both the same well I, I think... I, I... oh yeah sorry you go no no go go uh, i was just gonna say i think it's because the prometheus was exiled for giving fire to mankind um and i think it in the same way oppenheimer ended up being um, rejected by the U.S. government after inventing the nuclear bomb. Um, I think that's like sort of a bit of a similar thing where he okay. gave mankind the most powerful weapon ever, and then he was rejected by everyone afterwards. Um, I think that's yeah, that's like a little bit like Prometheus. Mm. I I did myself a disservice, so I freaking I wanted to see it so bad with my friends. I didn't want to see it by myself because it's a long movie, intense movie. I wanted to sp- experience it with someone. I've been lately this year. I've been trying to like go to the movies by myself and not caring about that. But certain movies, yeah, you just want to see with someone. Barbie, I saw with a, another friend, and yeah. I kept s- and and Oppenheimer and and this thing. The thing is, this movie was like all oh, IMAX everything, and I've never seen an IMAX movie. We don't have an IMAX theater here, mm. but where my friend moved to, there is an IMAX there, and. Oppenheimer kept getting extended, like the I- IMAX day. It kept getting extended, like by a couple weeks, every couple weeks. Mm. Uh, and I was super excited because I'm like, yes, like all oh, this time didn't work out. Let's try another time. Da, da, da. And eventually, all of August came and went, and they ended up telling me like, ah, oh, they don't think it's gonna work out because they're 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 gonna get ready for a move soon. So mm-hmm. I understand. I kind of did myself a disservice, and now I've I think I've missed Oppenheimer. Yeah. I didn't get to see it, and I and I didn't want to see it in just a, a normal theater. I feel like I, that like I'm sure it would still be a good experience in a theater. Well, from what I've heard is that it's one of like the mo- least essential movies that Christopher Nolan's done to see in IMAX, um, just because of the biopic, you know, nature of it. I'm sure. I'm sure. Like, it, it, there's better. Like, there would have been better like, picks for it. But I just think it would have been a good movie yeah. to see. I like. I I saw it the day it came out. Um, by myself. Um, in theaters, and it was amazing. No, yeah. Um, I, mean, I saw it. I, I saw it twice in theaters. <laughs> when I saw uh, uh, Mission Impossible, uh, I could hear the explosions of Oppenheimer in the in the show yeah. next to me. <laughs> I could, That's I could hilarious. Just hear the really, really like loud but muffled. <laughs> did Did you um Did you watch Oppenheimer in uh Oppenheimer? Did you watch Mission Impossible in theaters? Yeah. Uh sorry, not oh. theaters. I'm in IMAX. Oh no 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 no. 
Yeah. Damn. Uh, I feel like that would have been cool in IMAX. Do you guys have IMAX in Italy? Uh, I think so, but no, I, I didn't. Uh, yeah. I didn't choose that. And uh, yeah. it's uh, Mission Impossible is pretty good. But yeah. uh, Open I mm. Openheimer was like, there's like 15 minute sequence of the bomb. Just <laughs> yeah, but just sequence leading, up, leading up to that point, mm -hmm. it's just so incredible. Man, the say yeah, the the sequence with the bomb was fucking amazing. I yeah, the I sound had, I had was tics. incredible. I had psychological ticks all around me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because the bomb didn't detonate. You guys are like into like psychological like horror films it sounds like i love i love psychological horror yeah i watched uh, maybe all of the cronenberg movies but it's body <laughs> horror yeah, i never i refuse to watch any david cronenberg movie they're also like they just all look so gross and Cronenberg, David Cron yeah. David Cronenberg. He makes like just really gross movies. They're just yeah. fucked. Is it visually gross or like conceptually? Ah, uh, visually both, both, both. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I've never even heard of it. Um, like he did a remake of, of a movie. He did a movie, a remake of a movie called The Fly. Um, so the original Fly is from the nineteen fifties, but it's about a um scientist who accidentally turns himself into a fly. Um, I think I've heard of the first one. Uh, yeah, yes, so in, there's fly, there's uh, scanners. Uh, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Crash. Crash. Existence. Oh, and, oh yeah, my friend loves existence, um, but existence I never ever, is... I never ever want to watch Crash. Just from what I've heard of it, I'm just like, fuck that. It just sounds disgusting. <laughs> yeah, like, what? I, I, that's that's an annoying like combination <laughs> for a genre name. I don't like that. <laughs> Erotic thriller. I don't, it's a horrible title. So it so it follows a film producer who, after surviving a car crash, becomes involved with a group of Symphorophiliacs who are aroused by car crashes and tries to rekindle his sexual relationship with his wife. Hello, Lucas. Talking about movies. Yo, Lucas, Hello. what's up? We're just chatting about movies at the moment, chatting about grosses, grosses fuck movies. <laughs> um, have, have you yeah, guys what's uh... your... oh, go I was just going to ask Lucas what his favorite movie is. I was gonna ask uh, if you guys have seen Beef, because Beef has uh, a couple scenes that are like supposed to be like sexually intense, but like that shit just makes me so uncomfortable because it's supposed to be like uncomfortable. I I can't stand it. Yeah, I don't like it. I haven't seen Beef. My parents tried to. Uh, Ocean's Twelve. Interesting. I haven't. I don't think I've seen it. I think I started watching it when I was, but then for some reason, like got busy and didn't watch it. Um, I've always heard. But about Ocean's. It. Oh, Ocean's, Ocean's Eleven. 11. It's a sequel. Okay. Yeah. So there's a, so there's a trilogy. There's Ocean's Eleven, Ocean's Twelve, and Ocean's Thirteen. I, I, okay, um, I've I'm, heard of Ocean's Eleven and Thirteen, but I haven't heard of Twelve. <laughs> yeah, I've only heard of Ocean. I've only seen Ocean's Eleven, um, and Ocean's Eleven is unreal. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I must have gotten busy when I started watching Ocean Twelve or something because yeah, I didn't finish it. Um, but it's on my list because I love Ocean's Eleven. It's got like. Ocean's Eleven has like one of the coolest like twists of all time. We don't talk about thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, no, okay. yeah, it looks it looks like it's there's something about trilogies from or trilogies where the third one released in the mid two thousands where it, they all flopped. Ru uh, Rush yeah. Hour Three came out at that time too. There's, some, there's something about it. <laughs> did you um? Did you watch Ocean's Eight, Lucas? Is that like a prequel or something? 
Oh yeah, in um in twenty eighteen they did a an all female um one called Ocean's Eight. Oh, I remember seeing this like on Twitter. Um, and it was like it was like his sister or something. No, yeah, uh, I actually pretty... remember seeing trailers for that. It it was fun. Um, yeah, like like Lucas, I don't really remember heaps about it. I just remember enjoying it in the moment. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't mind a bit of a fun, fun, forgettable movie every now and then, to be honest. Tag, bro. That's a movie I need to see. Tag, about. tag, banger. I loved Tag. I, I saw that with my dad a long, long time ago. I remember liking it. Yeah. No, I remember going through a period in 2018 where I was just watching heaps of random comedies in theaters. Like, I watched Tag. Um, I watched Game Night. Um, I watched Blockers with John Cena. That movie was hilarious. Um, I don't know. I can't remember what else, but yeah. Dexter, are you much of a comedy guy? Uh, no, no way. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but I, I will watch the John Cena movie. Bl- Blockers. I've, I've never heard of this one. Blockers was hips fun, actually. My favorite comedy of all time, though, The Nice Guys. That that, that that's movie. a movie I saw a long time ago, but I I remember loving it. That movie, fucking oh, this is like some of the hardest I've ever laughed at a movie in my life. I um, Ryan Gosling, like in that movie, was incredible. Like he is, he needs to like Ryan Gosling needs to be in more comedies. Honestly, like he is hilarious. Oh, I mean, he was like. That. Super funny in Barbie. Yeah. The one with Seth Rogen and Zach Everyone. Was that Bad Bad Neighbors? Oh, I remember seeing commercial for that one. Maybe it's just called Neighbors? Yeah, so it looks like it was released as Neighbors, but in some countries it was called Bad Neighbors. And I guess it must have been called um, Bad Neighbors in 2014. Yeah, I remember seeing commercials for like yeah, I remember, Australia. Man, mid two thousand tens was the last era of like comedy movies. Really, really, really gunning for it. Yeah, well, because they don't do that well these days. Like there was one recently. Um, hang on, give me a sec. I can't remember what it was called. Um, but so the two, the two like so there was one recently with called No Hard Feelings with um Jennifer Lawrence, and that kind of flopped. Um. And then there was one, um, also uh, a joyride, uh, and it had the 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 daughter from Everything Everywhere all at once in it. Um, and there was a movie, yeah, it was a comedy called Joyride, and apparently that was also pretty good, um, uh, but it just completely flopped as well. What's there, uh, there's a movie? What's what's? So I guess the thing is, I guess people don't really watch comedies unless they have like an actor to like pull. Yeah, you know, I, I think fucking... I think like you know you talking about like comedies just kind of not being strong films. I think is is kind of bitten them in the back because like yeah. now like 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 all the all the comedies you've mentioned that you really enjoyed are really a type of movie with a comedy spin to it. Like tag is there's a yeah. lot of like psychological moments. Well, like like I loved like Mission Impossible, right? Like I fucking loved the Fiat chase scene in that, right? Like Mission Impossible isn't a comedy, but that that segment was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, and so like when action movies are having you know scenes like that in it, um, like I just don't have that much um desire to watch a straight comedy film like anymore. I'm also Lucas, so Project X. Um, that was actually based on a real um Australian guy. Um. What what movie was Lakeith Stanfield in that had a really fucked up twist? Rick, if you have not watched this interview, you got to watch it at some point. Um, the movie with Lakeith Stanfield with the fucked up Sorry twist. To bother sorry, you. To bo- sorry to bother you. I fucking hated that movie. I loved it up until the twist, and then I'm like, oh. Oh, you didn't like the twist? <laughs> the twist was what made me go like, what no. the fuck? I, like, it, 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 no. Nah, dude. No, nah, this shit was nuts, man. I think it was crazy. Like. Like, like, the, 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 f- to think it was like, oh my god, man, nah, bro, that movie. Sh- I'm not a, f- I'm not a fan of gross things in movies. Like, I, I get I mean, it, I get it. You know, I'm just, 
it's, it's just, just it's just ter- it was literally nothing like I thought it would be. Like I remember seeing the commercials for it and thinking it'd be a type of movie. It was nothing like I thought it was gonna. Yeah. Oh, a current affair. I used to watch Critical a lot, and he would go on a current aff- over a current affair all the time. That that is a nuts. Like they cover some crazy shit on there. Bro, a, a current affair in Australia is just. It's like a meme. It's yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I, I I assumed it's 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 like it has to be the equivalent of like uh, National Enquirer over here like, in the it's US. It's so trash. Like they're just like like <laughs> like harass people and like really like sensationalistic. No, um, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. quote unquote journalism. Um. Yeah, I just remember like <laughs> critical would just constantly be laughing. Like, why is this news? <laughs> Yeah, it's just shit like, like, this Australian man has been unfairly targeted by the police with parking fines. And then they, like, interview the guy. And then they'll, like, harass the police, like, the police constable or something. And um, it's always so funny, like, because, like, it's so obvious that the people don't fuck with, like, the reporters there. So, like, they'll be, like, yeah. <laughs> fucking with the reporters. No, it'll literally just be, like, ten minutes of them stalking someone while the person's like, no, like, I don't want to talk to you. And then the reporter's like, like, don't you have anything to say about this? And they're like, like, no, like, no comment. Um, You got anything like that in Italy, Dexter? uh, Like a popular news station uh, that's really just seen as a joke? This is, this is uh, an absolute. uh, Rewind the, the topic, sorry. Oh, we just started talking about a current affair. Uh, it's a uh, an Australian news channel, right? Like it's uh, on TV. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, they just again, it's like sensational sensationalism is like uh, what that means is like exaggerating for like a national audience to make it a bigger deal. So it'll be like super interpersonal like issues or something, and they'll make an entire news segment about registered it. micro. Right, I've got up this clip here. It is the most classic yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. thing of all time. This Have you you've seen it? Yeah. Is it loading for you, Dexter? Cleaned up after, de-sexed, leashed, not allowed on the beaches or in the parks outside certain hours. So how is it that these two are roaming their neighbourhood, frightening the locals, and the council isn't stopping it? Now, yesterday morning, I came out into the front yard and the dogs were across the road. And as soon as they saw me, they came bounding over. <laughs> no, no, we don't have it. <laughs> no, we do not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, fucking classic. It's like uh, uh, that movie. Yeah, yeah kind of. Uh, what's up? I don't remember. I don't remember the movie. Are you, uh, is it a by chance a Will Ferrell movie? No, it's a Lantimos movie. Oh, where the, oh the, the yeah, okay. Yeah, the the kids uh, keep barking, and they learn uh, to bark. Is it Dog Tooth? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dog Tooth. Yeah, that's the that's the only movie from. It's that's like I really want to watch that movie. I loved um, Killing of a Sacred Deer. That movie was amazing. Oh, it's a Greek movie. What's that too? Yeah. Um, Inspired okay, by um, a random... Mexican film. Bro, a random fact about that director that blew my mind is that before he was a film director, like literally an Oscar-winning film director, um, he was on the Greek national basketball team. <laughs> that's a, that's that's a pretty like badass. Uh, <laughs> like career. he was literally a. Literally a professional basketball player. <laughs> and then he um, quit that and became... How tall is this man? I don't know. Yeah, and then he became an Oscar-winning film film director. Uh, he's 1.87 meters, so he's six foot, six foot one. People in the audience, come have a talk. Come have a talk. <laughs> yeah, so he was, he was six. He was six foot one. Hi, peppermint. Was good, pep. Yo, good Mackenzie, Mac- what's up? Mac and cheese. Was good, 
mac and cheese. We got we got two <sighs> foods. Pep. Man. I'm so freaking depressed that this bloody man. <sighs> well, we'll get it. We'll get her on another time. I'm gonna. I wanna kill Abriction. I hate. Me and my homies hate Abriction. No, that album was really good though. Yeah, and this is coming from someone who who's like never really like again like before I like like a couple months like a month or two ago when I started listening to jazz I never really listened to instrumentals or really long instrumentals or anything of the sort that album was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <sighs> anyway, how are you, how are you been, Mackenzie? I feel like I haven't seen you in, in a minute. What's 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 been happening? Akima, Pep, and Mac and Cheese. Put your favorite movie in the chat right now. The Lobster. That was a good movie. The Prince of Egypt. Have you seen The Lobster? I want to watch it. It's on my list. Oh, you haven't? Oh. No. It's the, it's the, that's the same. It's the director that we've been talking about, Rick. Made. Oh really? I, I I had no clue. Yeah, yeah see, it's, but... it's 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 a movie I saw a long time ago, like around when it came out, and then like a uh, five years later or, or something, there was a huge mm. conversation about it online. I thought it was a new movie. I went to go watch it again and realized it's a movie I've seen it already. <laughs> the Prince of Egypt. I've heard I've heard that's a pretty good movie. It's from DreamWorks, right? Prince of Egypt. Yeah. See, I like Prince of Egypt, but like my my top DreamWorks movie is El Dorado. The sound, dude, though, though, right. though, that that era of DreamWorks like soundtracks were crazy. I don't know what they were cooking, man. Do you do you have a, a track called El Dorado, Jake? Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I, see, like, album. yeah, the, 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 I don't know, like, what really like inspired me to call it that. I just one day was like El Dorado, and then it kind of like worked out that it kind of worked thematically i just really yeah, like okay. that album or not album uh, movie I, I think it's i, I like ah oh, so good it's so beautiful yeah damn mid 90s is good but there's a lot of parts about it that kind of make me uncomfortable i um i watched a movie called the mist um on the weekend with uh, my girlfriend and um it had the most fucked up ending of all time. So the first, like most of the movie is, um, so it's by the same director as Shawshank Redemption, right? Um, and the first like two thirds of the movie. So it's about like, it's based off a Stephen King novel. Um, and this like mist like rolls in over this town and um, they are trapped in the supermarket and there's like, like monsters like outside in the mist. Um, and the movie is just them, like, all the humans, like, inside the supermarket sort of, like, slowly, like, turning on each other um, as they start to realize, like, they might not, like, get out. Um, and then the movie has this really hopeful ending that quickly becomes the most fucked up, depressing ending of all time. Um, when, it, I, when I was a teacher, if I was a teenager, I would hate that. I hate movies that give you fake happy endings that, like, trick you. I hate that shit. Well, okay. Okay, so I don't know. Do you mind if I say what the ending is, or would you, or would you, mm, would you watch it? That's that's up to the audience. Personally, I'm not someone who tends to really care about spoilers all that much because half yeah. the time I won't even remember when I actually right. go watch the movie. Yeah. So what? So what the ending is, right? Is this group of so there's a father and a son, and then three others. Um, they leave. That's the so real, Akima. Um, they leave in this. They leave the supermarket in a car. Um, and they realize that. Um the mist goes like far beyond their town. So they're like, fuck it. Like, we'll just go as far as we can um, on this tank of petrol um, and then whatever. So they're driving and then as they, then the car stops. Um, and um, so then the father realizes that they have two options um, either. So they have a gun um, and they all, so they end up all deciding to commit suicide. Um, and so the father, but there's five people and only four bullets in the gun. So the father kills his son and the three other survivors um, and then decides to leave himself to die to the monsters. 
Um, but after he kills his son and the three survivors, um, and he gets out of the car to let the monsters come and kill him, um, the military rolls up and he fi- he finds out that the military is actually saved the day, um, and the monsters are all have all been defeated. Oh, um, oh. and he's just killed his son. Oh wow. <laughs> um yeah. So that was um at that point I'd run up to them and grab their gun. And... <laughs> that was one of the one of the movies of all time for sure. Um <laughs> it was All right, Kaima has a question for the Neighborhood Radio. <laughs> You're listening to the Neighborhood Radio and the Block Discord server. With Rick is ugly and Zeke, and spe- and special guest Dexter thirty two. Yeah, I'm joined with Dexter today. Dexter thirty two. TV <laughs> show ending that TV show ending that fucked me up. But okay, 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 bro, okay. How, who, I, I'm doubt any of you guys have seen this show. How who here has seen Kyle X Y? Kyle X Y. I don't. I don't know. I saw. I only had it, the DVDs and shit. Let me see what uh, channel it was on. Hold oh, up, hold up. Kyle X Y. But. It was the, the uh, twin pe- ABC. And I, I need to get Lucas, this out real quick. Lu- Lu- Lucas said that he's seen it. Oh. But um, Twin Peaks, the, the ending for Twin Peaks, uh, I literally, so that came out, like the final episode came out at 8 p.m. Um, so I reckon I would have finished watching it around 9 p.m. Um, and then I ended up being up until about 1 a.m. just having an existential crisis and crying. <laughs> Like intermittently crying and having an existential crisis and everything in between, because it was the most fucking crazy Hallery? ending of all time. How old was I? Um, sixteen. Sixteen. Oh wow, really? It had you that fucked up at sixteen? Mm-hmm. Freaking. Uh, so Cal X Y is this ABC ABC show. It's about a guy who was born in a tube and he's like basically a superhuman, right? He doesn't have a belly button, but he can read a book by just flipping through the pages in two seconds. He's, like, super fast, super strong, and, you know, the military wants to get him, but he wants to live a normal life. You know, normal shit. It's typical shit. It's not, like, the craziest, good, best show of all time or anything like that. But... It sounds, sounds, like, sounds like Smallville. Yeah, it, it's definitely in that kind of, like, teen drama, science fiction. It, it, yeah, it, it, you might not like it. That's not the point. The point is, we, me, and my, me and my brother were really, really into it, right? And, again, again these kind of shows, there's twists. There's a lot of storylines and relationships. You got to keep track of all that crap, right? By the end of season three, freaking, it was, it got to a huge, uh, uh, what's, what's it called, uh, what, what's the term, confrontation, they're in, like, some important lab, and there's someone who's trying to track down Kyle, and they're trying to kill him, type shit, right, or at least that's what they think, and then Kyle is grabbed by the neck, and he's like, how is this guy overpowering me, oh my god, I'm, oh my god, what's going on, what's going on, who are you, and then the person says, I'm your brother, and then the show got canceled. Damn. But he's like, uh, like, uh, yeah. uh, like, uh, uh, like <laughs> a freaking like, a uh, 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 one in a million like lab experiment that was never supposed to be like free to begin with. He doesn't even have any memories or anything. He's like, I have your brother. And then they fucking cancel that shit. I hate that stuff, mm. bro. Like a yeah. bad ending is like a, so much worse than no ending. I oh. that was a, that was yeah that was a really um fucked up um similar thing that happened to me um as a kid there was a hot wheel series called accelerators um and accelerators was really dark for a hot wheels show like um one of the main characters um who dies in the first accelerators movie um he comes back as a cyborg and they've like removed all his organs and anyway it was fucked up um and there's like another character who experiences ptsd of his brother dying in a car dying in a street racing accident um and there's a character from the first movie that um goes to jail and comes out as like a hardened criminal. So it's kind of wild for a chi- children's TV series. Anyway, um in the fi- so in the final movie um so throughout the movie there's this uh throughout all of the movies there's this mysterious group called the Silencers um and like no no one really knows like who they are. And in the last scene of the last Accelerators movie um the main character gets captured by the silencers um, and then when he's taken to their headquarters um, and then his father walks out. Oh, yeah. Um, as the leader of the silencers. Um, and that's the final scene. 
Um, and then they cancelled it um, for being too dark um, oh, for, a Hot Wheels, <laughs> for a Hot Wheels series, and they replaced it with Hot Wheels Battle Force 5, um, and then they've never done anything with it again. It's so fucking depressing. I feel that. Um, also, actually, Mackenzie, did you ever watch Jeopardy on ABC? Thomas says, I don't talk about it way too much, but the ending of the season five freaked me the fuck out. It basically lies to you about what happened in the show. Yeah, House is a show um, that like I never could really get into because it seems really fucky. Um, Jeopardy McKenzie was there was like the found footage thing of like those kids that were like in the bush, um, and there was aliens. So we just for uh, that's a really it's fucked up show that we used that we used to have on children's TV um in Australia. Um, was this show called Jeopardy? Um, and it's about a group of kids that get lost in the Australian bush, um, on a school trip. Um, and they're Scottish and like all this, it's kind of like a Blair Witch Project light, like type thing, like found footage, um, type thing. And that they, as they're like in the bush and things start getting really fucked up and they start to like encounter aliens and things like that. And, um, the ending of the series is the kids attending like, because they're all presumed missing right in the bush. Um, and the end of the series is like, they end up like attending their own funerals. Um, and some other shit like that. Um, and I just remember as a kid just being like, this is fucked up. <laughs> like, what kind of kids' TV show ends with the main characters, like, attending their own funerals and, like, all this, like, scary alien shit? Uh, I'm trying to find it on Wikipedia. Was it a BBC show? Um... I don't know. What? About a what, group what, of what, eight what? secondary students and their teacher from Falkirk, Scotland, who travel to the Australian bush to look for UFOs. They're given camcorders to record any sightings, and the series makes extensive use of found footage ostensibly recorded by the characters themselves. Yeah. It was scary as fuck. I hated it. It also aired on ABC in Australia. That's crazy. They got a BAFTA. Uh, can you repeat the name of it? Jeopardy. Okay. Yeah, and I was like, I remember there being all of this like wacky like time travel shit in it, and it was like like fucking in- yeah, like psychotically unhinged for a children's. See, I always heard about Happy Tree Friends, but I've literally never looked at it because as a, I, I never like gave into curiosity with all that like really messed up imagery stuff. Mm. For me, Happy Tree Friends was just edgy for the sake of like. Like being edgy. Like, are you sure it was things. actually on PBS? Like, I don't. I, I find that kind of hard to believe, though. PBS was like, yeah. PBS is like, okay, you're joking, okay? <laughs> because like, wait, it's from it's from 1999. That's fucking crazy. Oh wait, really? I guess, yeah, I mean, I guess I that makes sense though. Like, I I, well, I, I heard I, about I, it growing up as a kid. I, I... I just assumed it was some, like, internet, like, YouTube series that got turned into, like, a real thing. No, yeah. See, like, Don't, don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is something I saw because no matter how gross it can get, it's just puppets. Hmm. Like, even when they use, like, the guts and stuff, it's still puppets. So it never really actually got to me that much. Yeah. See, speaking I'm of PBS, sure what... Curious George, that's the goat. He doesn't have a tail. Did you ever watch um, Gruesome Tales with Gruesome Kids, Mackenzie? Yeah. Gruesome. So there used to be this show on Australian TV called Gruesome Tales for Gruesome Kids. Um, and it was kind of like a Twilight Zone like type show, like where every episode was like a different like sort of story about like something like weird. And um, Wait, what show was it called? There was uh, Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids. I've seen um, YouTube videos about that. And there was this one episode that has stuck with me to this day. Um, so it was about this kid um, called Tom. Um, the, the episode was called Tom Time. Um, and what uh, like was wrong with Tom was that like he was like always like two hours late to everything. Um, and he like yeah like just his whole life was like always late. Um, and then in the episode, um, like the like the apocalypse is happening. Um, and everyone has to like get off the Earth in rockets. Um, and then. Um, everyone else gets off the earth in rockets, um, but Tom was two hours late, um, and the world blows up. Um, but then 
instead of dying when the world blows up because he's on Tom time, um, he floats around in space for two hours in a bubble. Um, and that just filled me with existential dread as a kid because, like, imagine floating around in, a, like, just not like knowing that you've got no choice but to die for two hours. <laughs> see, like, that makes me <laughs> see, like, it, it's just so funny you say that stuff because it makes me think of people who like make the like you, people who like take something that's not that deep and say like this is what my d- dark mind goes to because what when you say that what i think of is uh in despicable me when a minion drinks some kind of like juice and they start floating and the like roof is open so they just keep floating into space yeah <laughs> and all i'm thinking is about like there's some kid who got scared of that they're like oh my god the minion's gonna die because they're gonna die <laughs> yeah no that that was literally like yeah this tom time episode like i just literally remember at the time like just thinking about like like the concept of like being a child and like having to like accept your death <laughs> like instead of being instead of your death being instantaneous because the world blows up you're like forced to float around in the void for two right. hours <laughs> like fuck that were you into like dark shows as a kid dexter Um, sorry, what? Were you into like okay. uh, darker shows as a kid? No, uh, no, I uh, just was a Scrubs fan, uh, but it's not dark. And uh, <laughs> I, I had like all the episodes pre-recorded uh, somewhere, and uh, till I was till I was like. Uh, from eight years old till twelve, I was like learning every single scene of Scrubs. And dude, uh, <laughs> Scrubs, dude, I, I was I was on that exact same wave. Scrubs is the best show ever made. I love that show. Yeah, yeah, I love. Uh, I don't know if I if I would love that now. Because, I, really? Yeah, because uh, there's some scenes that. I don't know, feel immature that uh, like from oh, oh, fourth yeah, oh, season. Sure. Yeah. From fourth season they just I don't know. Yeah, make I mean the like script more. So apparently there's like I actually read it about like there's like a lot of like background things that like directly contributed to the show getting, you know, quote unquote worse. But like I don't know, like I think in terms of comedy, the show I think was just was still pretty much the same after like it got kind of got downgraded like you said it's immature but it's like jd and turk they okay if y'all y'all yeah. might not know about it but when they go eagle like that's just some classic scrubs yeah. you know <laughs> the only problem is well, i think uh, they they dropped the the drama bits later on or the stack night the stack night uh in eighth season <laughs> Freaking. Brendan Fraser's episodes were always like top tier. Yeah, yeah, I I remember uh, watching also the 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 Scrubs uh, podcast with the with those. I episodes. need to listen to it because yeah, uh, if if you've never the the, the two main actors uh, did a, have or did a podcast where they watched every episode of Scrubs. It, they practically react to every episode. It's like until eight, uh, no, uh, episode ten of uh, eighth season, they reacted to all the episodes. Yeah, so like uh, they're doing that with Smallville at the moment. See, I love that shit. That's that's really cool. It's, because it's because TV. It's because TV actors have no relevance once their series ends, so they always just have to go back and relive it. I, I, I see. I, I, I see that with like, but that's the thing is, is like with uh, with Donald Faison and uh, Zach Braff, they, it's, it's they still do an actual podcast. Like they have, like it's half the Scrubs reaction, but it genuinely turned to its own like little podcast. Um, Should I? Ooh. But I think I think it's that it's it's a lot better than uh, the the. I think the DVD commentary, but the DVD commentary is cool. Because you should I buy the there. 1989 Taylor's version Rose Garden Pink Edition vinyl. How much is it? Seventy bucks. Seventy dollars, dude. Come on. Yeah. Seventy Australian. That is. That's still a lot. Anyway, to anyway to answer Rick's question, 
I remember that uh, there was a channel called the Right Group. Uh, right is the uh, official television here. Mm -hmm. And so Right Group just made it every kind of horror, horror, uh, uh, horror cartoons. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and it was pretty crazy. So it was just like a general channel. There wasn't like any like something specific it showed. Just kind of a little bit of everything. Yes. That's, that's... Uh, there was also the Jumanji, uh, the Jumanji cartoon that scared me a lot. There's a cartoon. Yes. And uh, what's that? Was uh. Yeah, there was also a couple of cartoons. Damn, this is like Already a classic, uh, classic cartoon. Pick inside my brain, like <laughs> they were kind of go, uh, like Cronenberg, like. But I, I feel like, uh, I feel like I, uh, I didn't have the the real capacities to be a filmmaker because. Uh, I went to academy to study to study film, <laughs> but I was uh, actually I was just traumatized by <laughs> by those cartoons and not uh, relieved <laughs> by I see. by them. So are you still pursuing filmmaking? Uh, no, mm. actually don't. Uh, I want to pursue philosophy now, so. Real philosophy is good. I studied that in year 12. Um, really enjoyed it. It was a good class. Okay. Yeah. If not philosophy, just like history or... That makes history sense. Is also uh, classic literature. Uh, I, 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 should, I feel like I should start listening to more like podcasts about that kind of stuff. <sighs> because I feel like there's I almost like that kind of stuff is like super like interesting I feel like inherently but you know I don't have like school near me to actually go to for that and then you can nearly rock at it and that's not by the way nah bro the, the, the 1980 the, I don't know I don't like the, the the blue one I don't like the centered text above that I, that kind of looks a little bit lazy but the the other oh, one yeah. I, th I, I like the I like the pink one I think the pink one has a really nice cover yeah Sure. Yeah, like the, the the real cover art is just a Polaroid. <laughs> they ain't Cardi. I'm just looking at the Taylor Swift um, cover art. Uh, Taylor Swift merchandise. Shop. So I don't know if that was supposed to just be a black image, Pep, but there's like a artifacts in this image that makes it look like there's supposed to be something in here i think i reckon it's the donda I, I, the yeah donda. but the, the, like hold on let me hopefully this translates when i take a screenshot <sighs> i i know okay the donda cover art gets such a bad rap i i, I feel like like, people make make it so much of a bigger deal than than it is. What? Don't the cover up. Yeah, it being blank. Uh, I don't really care about it. Yeah, like like it's, it's not weird. it's not that big of a deal. Like 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 you could say it's lazy, and I I I think see the thing. I think the uh, all the other cover arts that there were like shopped around before it, I think obviously would have been better cover arts. They were genuinely pretty cool arts, but for the album yeah. had nothing to do with it. Like, if he did, like, okay, a lot of people say, oh, this album sucks because it's not really about his mom. All Kanye albums are about Kanye. Imagine how bad that'd be if the cover had, like, th had this art that was all about motherhood and all that crap, and then it really wasn't about it. The, the reason why it's black is because that's, that's Kanye's mental state. It's ba it's lazy, this, sure, but, like... This should have been the on the cover art. Nah, see, like, that, that was really for God... Wasn't it God's country at that point still? No, no, that yes. was... The, that was... That was for the. That's the original Donda art. I don't think it would have fit at all. And then he went, and then it went to this one. 
like I think like when when I think of Donda, I think of a really broken man being really really sad, and I think the black mm. cover art really helps like translate that. Because if I see when I see this like uh, infrared image, it, it sounds like it'd be a lot more crazy uh, instrumentally and all that. And I don't you know the three bodily images don't really feel like thematically match the album at all. And then again, the album is very much not about his mother. So it being that art, which I think is great. I think it would have been a really, really cool art cover art, but it's not about his mother at all. Well, wasn't there like a cover art where yes. Kanye is playing the keys? That one's good. Oh, that, that, that's, like, that's like a Life of Pablo era. Um, what was that for? That was for a single. Okay. What? That's cool. Yeah, Jesus is King's cover, I think, is kind of lame. Like, I get it. It You know, because Yondi was supposed to be a Jesus sequel, but it turned into Jesus is King, so let's still keep it in that way. It is kind of lame in that regard. But... All right, Scuff, are you talking <laughs> about... Like uh? Scuff says that the other al albums look bad, in com or compared to the other albums, it looked bad. Are you talking about Donda's cover or uh, Jesus is King? I like Jesus is King's cover up. I mean, I think it's it's a solid cover art, but I think it, 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 in terms of, like philosophy, I think it's just kind of boring. Yeah, I think the college dropouts art isn't great. What? What? Seeing that, dude, that that depressed bear is so like iconic. The bear is, yeah, but I don't think the album is that good. What? Y'all are insane. What? Y'all are actually insane. What are you talking about? If we're talking about Kanye's best cover art, definitely uses. Mine's gotta go to graduation. Graduation, yeah. Jesus has great cover up. Freaking my friends for one of my birthdays got me uh, a graduation CD. It's not it doesn't actually have the actual CD, but it's the booklet. And there's a uh, the art what, is like actually really cool. Like cuz it what has birthday present. Why would they get you that without the well, CD? Well, no, cuz cuz they just saw it, they just saw it at a thrift shop and they're like, "Oh, hey, this is this, they we know he likes it and he, they know I just like the art." It's really cool. I uh I wish I could use my camera. It's still fucked up, but uh, it has uh, the front cover, obviously. But then there's the back cover, which shows uh, the you know how the camera is like in front of Kanye hmm. or the bear on the back. The camera's behind the bear. And then you flip it open and it has uh, a couple scenes from the Good Morning music video. Yeah. And that looks really cool. Oh, that's cute. Um, but again, I I think, uh, yeah. But Rick, labor station graduation. Okay. Eight oh eights. I forgot that that about that cover. The the eight oh eights version with the pot with the hands with the Mickey hands. I think that is like a top tier Kanye one. I think the normal one is kind of lame. It's kind of boring. But the one with the hands is really cool. Ugh, to be honest, though, aside from Kids See Ghosts, I don't think Kanye has any exceptional album art. I think his album art is only seen as good because the guy, the albums are good. Well, I, no, I I think... I, see, the thing is, I think Kanye's with his covers, like, like the covers themselves aren't really great, but I think they're they're perfect for the music that comes with them. I think that's that's what thing that he really gets. Like, they always, like... They're really on the mark aesthetically with what the album is. I don't think he's but missed in that regard. If the if the albums weren't classics though, like they'll just be like generic, like no one would look at. Any oh, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. But I mean, like I've I've talked about this. Like Jesus is Keen, I think is a better album now, knowing his trajectory uh, religiously, right? Because like Jesus Keen seemed really bad to a lot of people because he he seemed to be a pseudo religious person, you know, preaching all this no, stuff. Dude, dude, dude. Jesus is King is still boneless religious music and him. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. No, it is. But what I'm saying is, 
but in, in but when you look at it in terms of art being a, a form of expression and a chronicling of like his life and da 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 da, you look at Donda and you see how depressed he is and how he's so desperately trying to find God in order to better himself in his life. You can see through the bigger picture, Jesus is King is just it was him going through this mania that was very public with Ye. Everybody was really aware of it. Jesus is King shows that. Yes, it was like empty Christianism or whatever, but that's what he was trying to do in order to like, you know, to, to trick himself into life is better. That to trick himself that, yep, I'm a godly man, life's perfect. Woohoo! God. It, it, I think it's a really good uh representation of his mental state and the kind of mental gymnastics one might goes through with using religion as a as a ther as a what's it called? As a therapeutic outing, you know? Mm. Like, I, I think that, it, 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 again, it, the album itself doesn't necessarily become better, but when you look at, I, I'm, I'm someone who likes, the, you know, the meaning of the album, and what, what what is it really saying, you know? Mm. Fair. Yes, Gucci Mane mixtapes are classic covers. The one where he's eating pancakes, perfect. <sighs> oh, man. His worst cover is Love Everyone and Ecstasy. I don't know the Love Everyone cover, but Ecstasy, I think that's a real, it's a really weird cover, like, because it's all his stepsisters, but, like, I don't think it's a bad cover. Like, the art's fucked up enough to kind of, like, just kind of look cool. Man, I haven't listened to that song in so long. When I was abusing Sykes, that, that song went crazy. Also, I think Ecstasy is so interesting because the original version, what he, the lyrics are much more about like the effects that Ecstasy gives you, like the heart of breathing, the sweatiness and stuff. But the actual one that got released are, is more so representative of like the lack of filter you get when you're on Ecstasy. And I think that's very interesting. So I think Ecstasy kind of looks like it could have been like a West Side Gun, like album cover or something. Yeah. One of those. If one of those rappers came out with that album art, everyone would be saying it's hard. I, I think it's a good album art. Like, like again, for a song, aesthetically, I think it's a good cover. I think the art itself is really interesting. But again, it, for <laughs> in terms of the merits, it's very gross. <laughs> Definitely cover that is not promo art. Totally not promo art. Shows the cr gorilla's Cracker Island cover. Gorillas have a few iconic album covers like Damon Days. One of them, probably one of the most iconic album arts of all time. I love Plastic Beach. Plastic Beach is like one of the best albums ever made. And it's covers. Really Plastic cool. Beach, yeah. I think like the, and, the, like the, the island there is really detailed. And uh, uh, that one also. I don't remember the, I don't remember the name. <laughs> Is it a well, Gorilla's album? Uh, that one with the uh, guitar. Oh, the fall. Uh, so, the... or the now now, the yeah. now now. That's what it's called. The now. The now now. now. The no, now, yeah, that now one's was cool. Crazy. I didn't like the okay. album, but the co the that cover art's really, cool. Really good. <laughs> I still haven't heard from Abriction, so should we get into? I love my plug. Yeah. So. All right. Right. Um. Let's, well, let's thank see. you. Thank you for another episode. Thank you guys so much. Neighborhood Radio, almost five months. Thank you, Dexter, for joining and chatting. This was yeah. a fun. It was fun. Hope to see you guys next week, every Wednesday, 5 p.m. PST. Neighborhood yeah. Radio. Mwah. Gracias. Bye-bye.